We set. Is it working? I think so. Ah, I'm wrecking my place. My apartment's too small for this. All right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, glad you could join me. Um, going to be uh, building a gaming PC today for uh, a buddy of mine. Uh, lives right up the street. He's a follower of my stream. Um, he, uh, he's got a really busy life. I think he's working two jobs, or at least I know he was. He's married, has three kids, two uh, three-year-old twins, basically. They're little monsters, as, as he likes to call them, the monsters. And uh, one little girl who's, uh, I think, in fourth or fifth third or fourth grade something like that anyways young kids he's got some young kids and uh he's not very good at building pcs and but he loves to play he loves playing pc games and uh he asked me to uh build him a new pc i'm like yeah sure why not and then i thought hey maybe i can stream it uh he, he knows a little bit about my history um I built my first PC back in uh, 1989 out of uh, used parts. My father used to work for IBM when I was growing up, and uh, in 1989 he started bringing me home parts, uh, leftover parts from PCs that people had returned or were broken or whatever, but the good parts from them. And uh, uh, when I was uh, 15 or 14 years old, something like that. I used all those parts and built my first PC, an IBM AT with an Intel 8386 CPU. I want to say it had like four or maybe eight megs of RAM, something like that. It might have been even less than that. If, I, don't, I don't even remember exactly. Uh, I had a 42 gig hard drive, uh, a CGA graphics card. Um, 1200 baud modem so I could connect to local bulletin boards and stuff the download games and things and Porn yeah, I was using internet porn back in 1989 <laughs> Wasn't really the internet back then but you know the uh, Same thing sort of um, Let me see here. I should probably make this chat bigger over here so that I can see it. I got a laptop right here so I could try to monitor the chat, but it's a small laptop, um, kind of hard to read. Maybe I can increase the text size on it. Uh, let's see here. I think there's a way to do it. Uh, that font size, yes. Uh, Let's do 15, maybe. Try that. Yeah, that'll work. Does this thing say I'm live yet? It doesn't say I'm live. My, my dashboard still says I'm not live. That's weird. Trying to check everything. Oh yeah, now it says it is. It says I have 10 people watching already. Wow, okay. So anyways, so yeah, I've been building PCs since 1989. Um, back in uh, 2004. Back in 2004, I started my own PC business. Uh, I was uh, building custom PCs for people. Um, doing networking for small businesses that sort of thing i had uh three or four different businesses that i that i did work for built their pcs for them did all their networking um i uh i don't know how many pcs i built for people all around the kansas city area i had customers uh, uh some some customers were an hour and a half away i would drive all over town during the week and I had, a, I had a shop in my old house down in the basement with work shelves and everything set up so that I could, I could 
really work on people's PCs. And I had a bench machine that, in fact, I still have my bench, my old bench machine. I use it as my file server now. But I would plug in people's hard drives to that and scan them with malware bytes and other things because a lot of customers, especially back in the early 2000s, I, I, I probably made more money cleaning people's computers uh, from viruses and malware than I actually did from building PCs. I never made a lot of money from building PCs. Uh, in fact, I'm not even making anything on this build today. I'm just doing this as a friend or as a favor for my buddy. But uh, I made a lot of money cleaning viruses and malware back then. So many people would buy that new PC from Best Buy for 400 bucks or whatever it was. And it came with the, the tower and the monitor and the printer, and keyboard, mouse, and it had a 30 day trial of Norton or something on it. And it would expire and they wouldn't know about it. And, wouldn't realize it and the next thing they, they knew their PC was infected so that's how I made the majority of my money um, and I've continued to build PCs ever since in 2008 I became the technology teacher for a small private school here in Kansas City and and I've been teaching the kids there how to build PCs if you follow my Twitter or on my discord uh, you've seen some of the pictures that I post of my students Lot, several of them play Mech Warrior Online, which is has been my favorite game. Although after reading the patch notes last night, you know I'm a little worried about that one. <laughs> um, yeah, so I I'm always surrounded by PC parts, components. Uh, when people walk into my apartment, uh, they see network switches and GPUs lying around. I mean, even right here, I've got a I got an old home theater PC that I that I just don't know what to do with. One that I built for my my father-in-law several years ago, and it's just kind of old technology now. And I'm not sure if I should re remake that into a better a better PC or something. But yeah, so and I in my closet in my bedroom, half of the closet is taken up with all my bins and drawers full of parts, GPUs sound cards sata cables power cables usb cables networking cables power supplies etc i just it, i just have tons and tons of stuff a lot of that's just left over from my business that i used to have and so i have a lot of experience when it comes to building pcs however today there's gonna be a couple firsts for me today uh Today I'm going to be building, a, as you can see from the, the little camera, I'm going to, I'm going to be building a, uh, a Ryzen, let's see if I can see that there, yeah, a Ryzen PC, AMD Ryzen, uh, being the first, first PC I built with a Ryzen, although I, from everything I've seen and learned, it's pretty much the same thing as building it with, a, with an AM3 CPU. And uh, you can see on the small table here, uh, the different parts that I'm going to be using to build this PC. In fact, why don't I switch the uh, camera around so you guys can see that better. And then I'll go over why I chose to do it this way. I'll go to this scene here. Okay. All right. So you here you can get a basic look at all the different parts we're going to be using in this PC. Um, when my buddy, his name is Raised, when he first came to me, and asked me if I'd build him a PC. I said, sure, you know, I'm just doing it as a favor for him. Um, he really needs a new one. His current PC is running an AMD FX 8320 CPU, an eight or 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM, an 80 gig SSD, uh, an NVIDIA GTX 650 graphics card. So he, really needs a new PC. Uh, one of the main games that he likes to play, same as me, is MechWarrior Online. And MechWarrior Online is a very CPU intensive game. Much more CPU intensive than it is GPU intensive in my personal opinion. And so, and so it was really just time to get him into a new PC. Uh, he came to me for it, and I said, "Yeah, sure, I'll get, I'll do that build for you." So, here we're looking at the basic parts. His budget was a thousand dollars, and if you want to see, if you want to look up the actual parts that are uh, that I used in here, see their current prices. Just type in exclamation point build, 
and it'll give you a link to the PC part picker list. Uh, PC part picker list was a little off on some of its prices. I noticed that the PC part picker hasn't been as accurate lately as it used to be. But uh, still, if you type in exclamation point build, you can see a list of parts, this very list of parts. Uh, the only things that you won't see on the list are these fans. Uh, these fans are actually used. Uh, they have a little bit of dust on them, but they're not bad. Uh, got two Corsair 140... 140 millimeter blue LED fans here and one deep cool 120 millimeter blue LED fan uh, His his PC was gonna seriously run over budget um, Not seriously. He's gonna run a few dollars over budget and me being a poor school teacher I didn't really have the funds to to Compensate that and so but I have I do have a drawer just full of fans. I've got tons of fans I'm using 120, 140 millimeter fans from Corsair and even in my bench machine, which doesn't even really need it. I put some in my son's Plex server, which is sitting over there on the other side of the room. I've got tons and tons of fans, a whole drawer just full of them. So I was like, yeah, I'll just toss in a few fans. And then he, he even had his choice. He could do blue LED or he could do white LED. He could do plain. He chose to go with blue. So... We're going to put two 140 millimeter fans in this thing and 120 millimeter. But let's go over the rest of the parts and why I chose this. $1,000 to spend. I wanted to build for him a PC that would get, get him decent frame rates in most, if not all, games. And many games to be able to play at high settings, if not medium settings, and get good frame rates, which is what he, one of the things he's struggling with right now. Uh, and I also wanted to make sure that his PC had the expandab expandability options to it. So going forward in the future, if you want to upgrade that C the CPU or add more RAM to it, etc., he would be more than capable of doing it. So, for starters, I went with the AMD Ryzen 5. This is actually a 1500X. Uh, this CPU came out in 2017. And it's a, it was a damn good CPU for its time. Very competitively priced against Intel. Very good performing hey, sexy. against Intel. Well, can I not, get a, not a performance crown winner, but still a much closer race between Ryzen and current gen Intel CPUs than what had happened previously in 2012 with the AMD FX series. And the, the competitive price is what made it worth it. Now, of course, uh, this is a 1500X which I can maybe show you right there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but 1500X. Uh, 2017 model, of course, the 2000 series Ryzen CPUs have come out. And uh, they, uh, they're, a, they're a little bit better than the 1000 series. However, it was, as it was stated in all the reviews, if you currently owned a 1000 series Ryzen, there was no real need to upgrade to a 2000 series Ryzen yet. And with the 2000 series being out, the prices on the 1000 series Ryzen's are actually really good right now. So I was able to get the CPU for pretty cheap. Um, that's the CPU for the main board. Did a full ATX main board from MSI. This is the B350 PC Mate. B350 is actually the chipset that's that's used. When AMD released Ryzen, they did they created three different chipsets with B350 being the one in the middle. The B350 there I have to look it up to remember the the names of the other ones. I uh, I didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night, so I'm slightly tired here. Um but B350 is the chipset right in the middle of the three. It, it, the, depending on which chipset you get would depend on which features you can get uh, with the with the entry level chipset you, you can only use certain CPUs uh, with the B350 you can use all the Ryzen CPUs plus you can do some overclocking and then the, there was another chipset that's a step above this that you can uh, you can add more PCI Express lanes and a bunch of other really cool features B350 is clearly the most popular chipset because it provides most of the features neat that you that the average gamer would want, especially that overclocking capability. So 
this is this piece right here says it's the main board says it's AMD Ryzen desktop 2000 ready I don't know that it really is it actually says that see it right right in here uh, we're gonna flash the BIOS on this provided everything boots up and everything checks off once the system is built we're gonna flash the BIOS to the latest BIOS so that way in the future if he wanted to upgrade to a Ryzen 7 2000 series CPU he could just stick it in there because I know in this case with a lot of these Ryzen 2000 ready stickers, what they're saying is, yeah, the Ryzen CPU will fit in here, but what they're not telling you is that the BIOS may not be flashed or up to spec for the, the latest CPUs. So regardless, once we know the system checks out, we're gonna flash the BIOS, make sure he has the absolute latest BIOS on there. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, if you have any questions for me, uh, please highlight my name in the question or not highlight my name but put at rj base 3 in the twitch chat that way i'll see the red as it goes by and i'll be sure to look at it and, and view the question because the, the chat is just hard to read from where i'm at um gpu gpu prices are falling right now as most people are aware gpu prices have been in the gutter for the last year year and a half they're finally starting to fall now so the EVGA GeForce GTX 1060 3 gigabyte version is actually really affordable right now I think we picked this one up for 250 260 let's see here um, oh got a first question why the m.2 SSD instead of instead of a standard SATA SSD. Well, the NVMe SSDs are actually a lot faster uh, than a standard SATA SSD. Uh, SATA can only transfer data at six gigs a second. NVMe running through PCI Express can actually transfer data much, much faster than that, providing a much better experience, faster boot times, faster load times for games. Uh, NVMe, if you're, gonna do, if you're gonna do a SATA drive today, as like your primary drive for your games, your operating system, etc., you definitely want to go with an with a uh, uh, M.2 NVMe drive. It, they're they're just so much better, so much faster. Now this one is uh, a first gen NVMe drive from Western Digital. Uh, this this drive, well, it got decent reviews. It certainly wasn't a performance crown winner compared to other ones like Samsung and Intel but it was still it's still really really fast and currently he's using an 80 gig SATA standard two and a half inch SSD like a first gen SSD and so this this drive right here is gonna just completely smash the speeds of his current SSD and the price on these right here this price on this western digital was not was not bad at all it was actually a really good price on that uh ram went with the uh evo potenza it's eight gigs it's from guile gale guile i'm not sure how you say that one uh went with eight gigs of ram the main board actually supports four sticks of ram so that would uh when it comes to future upgrades with this system that's, that's exactly where I would tell them to look at first. Power supply, obviously, you can see it here. Corsair CX550. It's a, it's a, a 80 plus bronze rated power supply. When it comes to power supplies, I don't screw around. Uh, I've had power supplies go out. In fact, when I was building PCs for customers years ago, oftentimes I'd build a PC, I'd buy a case that came with a power supply. And I'd build the PC in that case, and oftentimes I had to I had to put up the money to do the refund on it because the, the cheap power supply uh, blew in it. So now, whenever I build a PC for somebody, I only there's only a couple brands that I actually stick to for the power supply, and that's mainly Corsair, EVGA, and Seasonic. Those are the three main brands that I trust the most in power supplies, uh, high quality stuff there, and. Uh, last couple parts here windows 10 pro didn't go with home edition 
it would be that was actually Windows 10 Pro was 120 bucks it's pretty expensive if you're gonna buy a copy the legit legal way there's a couple other places out there where you can go and get you know semi legit copies of Windows but I don't I don't even play around with that anymore so I just got a standard legit copy of Windows Windows Pro went with Windows Pro over Windows Home because uh, you can actually turn off those annoying updates and creator updates that Microsoft likes to send out with Windows 10 Pro. Any reason why PC parts are pricey? Uh, some of the stuff is not that pricey. Like, it's, like I was saying, this NVMe drive was not that bad. Um, RAM is pretty high right now because they're retooling fabs. One fab burnt down. And a lot of RAM is being used in cell phones. The cell phone market right now obviously is really big. So they're using a lot of RAM in cell phones. So there's kind of a shortage there. There's a little bit of a shortage. There's also some talk that they're actually price fixing. That different companies are price fixing the, the RAM prices. So uh, there could be something to do with that. Um, a lot of these parts weren't that pricey. The CPU or the power supply wasn't that bad. The CPU, like I said, the 1000 series AMD Ryzen's are actually a really good price right now. Motherboard was less than 100. I mean, I just you just talk about the silicon and everything else. That's what makes it so pricey. The electronics, the the, the tools, the machinery to make all that stuff, the people to to put it all together. I mean, it costs add up over time. Uh, Thermaltake 850. Thermaltake, yeah, they make a good power supply. I have a, I have a Thermaltake in my work PC. It used to be my main power supply. Uh, but one of the PCI lanes finally went out on it after uh, about oh, six years or so. It still works. You just, can't, you just can't use one of the PCI lanes. Rails, I should say. Yeah. Uh... And again, if you have questions for me, please tag me in the question at RJBase3. Uh, these two fans are 140 millimeters. They're actually going to go in the front of the case. Oh, that reminds me, the case. I can get this down here. The case, we went with the Fantech uh, P300. This is the Fantech P300. See, see all that there? This was the 2017 budget case of the year. Very good reviews from pretty much everybody. Uh, Hardware Canucks, Linus Tech Tips, Paul's Hardware, you name it, uh, Anantech. They all said this was one of the best cases for the money. I think we got that case for $55. It's tempered glass, has a power supply shroud, behind the main board wiring, has room for a two radiator, uh, 240 millimeter or 240 radiator, 280, something like that. Basically, two a radiator with 220 millimeter fans on it. Um, just a really nice little case. So we're pretty happy about that. And of course, yeah, we've got the. I don't know if I talked about the RGB, but we have we're putting a little bit of RGB in this thing form. One of the things that my buddies, I told you about my buddy's kids. He's got two little boys, and when little boys see their dad playing these really cool games on this PC that's lit up all these bright colors that could turn those kids on to gaming. I've, I've learned this over the years by being a teacher. My students love RGB. And if you can get kids into gaming, that means as, as they're getting older, they'll spend all their money on games instead of drugs. And that's a good thing. You don't want them to spend their money on drugs. Got the hardcore beard noise going on or something as well. He's trying to outbeard Darren. No, I don't think so. Uh, PC is for my buddy Ray's. You should know Ray's Panic. He's uh, he's been he's a friend on the two two eight TS. He uh, been over here at my apartment. So this this is a PC for him. So anyways, let's get started with the build. I'm going to clear off this table here. I don't have my old workbench like I used to in my old apartment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make some room up here. I'm going to put all the parts up here behind me. 
I've also got my tools all here. I got some zip ties, uh, electric screwdriver, standard screwdriver kit, and wire cutters. So we're gonna put we're gonna put everything up here so that I can work on the table. All right, we're actually gonna start with the motherboard. Uh, gonna get everything ready here. And like I was saying, this is a full ATX. B350 chipset from AMD. I've already opened up most of this stuff to inspect it. Now, since I'm working on carpet and I don't have a static discharge cable, I am going to keep the main board on the static bag. Let me get all the different parts out of here for it. There's our back plate, which is very important. Uh, a couple of SATA cables, which we won't need right now. Also comes with the manual, the driver, driver disc, uh, warranty, warranty information, all that good fun stuff. So we'll probably we're gonna leave all the rest of that in the box for now. Need a bigger table. Yeah, I do need a bigger table. Hey, your beard is scratching against the mic wind guard. All right, thanks. Uh, this might get loud. Let's see if I can move it. Where would I put it? I got an idea. It's going to get loud for a second. Sorry, guys. We'll just attach it up here. Maybe it won't. Okay, can you still hear me all right? Oh. Let's see if it keeps scratching. Okay, well, let me know if it keeps causing a problem. And again, it's hard for me to read the Twitch chat from back here, so. If you have something specifically to say, uh, tag me in it, type uh, at rjbase3. Well, I'm still good. Okay, good. All right. So starting with the main board. Now, what I like to do when I'm building a PC is I like to get everything. Let's see. Let's do it like this. I try to put another camera up high. It's just a cheap webcam. That's all I have are cheap webcams. I have a... Uh, I have another camera that actually would have been much better for doing something like this, except I didn't have the right cables to stream with it. So uh, looking at the main board here though, you can see it. I'll actually hold it up a little bit closer to the camera. There's our main slots for, for RAM. We got four slots there, CPU socket, heat sinks over the various Equipment on the board there that needs it. 24-pin uh, main power supply. PCI Express times 16. PCI Express times 1. Another PCI Express times 16, but this one will go down to 8 or only 4 lanes instead of 16. Because with the B350 chipset, you can only have one full PCI Express times 16. Uh, two standard PCI, slot, PCI slots there, which... Kind of find funny to be honest with you because I don't think people really use those anymore. Got some SATA ports over here that we will not be using on the end of the of the of the main board. We have our USB 3.0 connection, more SATA connections. There's fan connections all over the place. There's a second USB 3.0 connection right here. Um, yeah, that's basically it. But what we're going to have to do here, though, one of the things that this board came with, and which is typical with most AMD boards, especially with the AM4 chipset, still has kind of their old style of heatsink bracket on here. We're actually going to have to take those off because the AMD CPUs and the standard coolers that they come with don't actually use those. And the reason why they leave those on there it's because a lot of people still use aftermarket CPUs for AMD that can actually utilize those brackets still. 
but we have we have the uh, the OEM cooler. This is the AMD Wraith Spire that comes with many of the AMD CPUs. Now, I was a little disappointed because I thought this was one of the ones that was going to have the RGB ring that went around it, but apparently they didn't do that for Ryzen 5s and the 1000 series. They only started doing that for the Ryzen 5s and the 2000 series. So, he won't have he won't have that pretty RGB ring going around it. Basically, the way this works, if I can get it up close here and you can see it, these screws that are around the outside, they actually have to screw down into the same spot that the screws are on on these brackets here. So we're going to have to set that up. Comes with thermal paste on it. We will just utilize the thermal paste that's already there. What I like to do is I like to get everything on the board that needs to be on the board before I put, before I put it into the case. Now, I've never worked with a Ryzen CPU before, and I've never worked with this case before, so there's going to be a little bit of trial and error as I go here. But the other thing, I, I mean, I like to get, I like to get as much of it on the board as possible before before I do before putting it in the case. The only thing I won't put on will be the GPU. I'll save that till after it's in the case. Um, don't touch that connector. Don't touch. Don't touch what connector? Which connector? Talking about this connector? No, you never use the fact. Well, if you're just if you're just going to use uh, the the OEM cooler and you're not going to do any overclocking, the the factory thermal paste is usually just fine. Uh, if not. I have other thermal paste here. I've got tons of it. I have four or five tubes of thermal paste from Arctic Silver to Cooler Master to other stuff. So I could always use that. Um, let's uh, let's pull out get the RAM and the M.2 drive. I've only I've only uh, installed a couple of m.2 drives i have one in my pc and i've put one in at the school actually the kids put it in i just told them how to do it most main boards have a uh, where you have to screw them in so there's a screw already here plugged in right there and what we're going to do here, this is only going to go to the third screw hole. So before I put that in there, we are going to unscrew the screw so we can get out the, uh, or fasten down the NV, NV drive. So this is basically just going to slide in right here. Yep, and then we need that standoff there, that standoff and, and the screw. Put the screw right there. I'm just going to put that down right there. Put the M.2 drive back in. hate these screws I, this is this is one of the new texts that I struggle with right here these tiny screws I may need some more coffee here soon I actually woke up at 4 30 this morning couldn't sleep to save my life Here we go. All right. Now our NVMe drive is in place. 
can also put the RAM in, or maybe we should do the CPU first. Yeah, we should do the CPU first, because that cooler, and the cooler shouldn't be too bad still. Get out my electric screwdriver here. We're gonna take off these brackets so that I can screw the OEM cooler into place. There's, there's those brackets, standard AMD bracket they've been using since the uh, AM2 CPU, I want to say, AM2, AM2 socket. Yeah, we're going to get this out of the way. Oh, we're going to put these brackets over here. All right, let's get our CPU pulled out. Come on. All right, now when starting a CPU, if you've never done it before, I'm gonna try to get this close enough to the camera so you can see it without touching the pins here. Uh, let's see if you can see that. There's a, there's a gold triangle on the corner here. And what that does is it matches up with one of the corners. On one of the corners of the socket, there will be a triangle. And what you do is you match up the two triangles together and it looks like it's this corner right here and if you do it right the cpu should just fall right into place you shouldn't need to push down or anything it should just fall right into place you never when you're especially with amd cpus you never ever try to force it in if everything is right and the pins aren't bent it'll just drop right into place so then all you have to do is close the lever and the cpu is in place so then it's just a matter of getting your cpu fan and heat sink ready what do you guys think this has the amd logo on it but the way it's set up it's going to have to either be left logo to the left or logo to the right what do you guys think i should do there It's the Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 5 1500X. 1500X. Again, if you type, if you type in exclamation point build, type in exclamation point build, you can see the PC part list, PC part picker list. You guys are saying left. Wild hype is saying left. All right, we'll go left. Wild hype, you win. Now when screwing down the CPU, you wanna do a little bit corner to corner. So I'm just gonna do a little bit on that side. A little bit on that side. A little bit on that side. Notice I'm going corner to corner. I started here, then I went to this side, then here, then over here. I got them each all started now, so now I'll screw in this side all the way. Then I'll do this side, opposite corner. Then this one. And then this one. CPU is nicely put into place. So now we just have our our cable for the fan and on the main board you should have a fan header which in this board let's see if i can sit it up here so you can see a little bit better on this board let's see it's actually right here and it even says on the board cpu fan so put that there's a way we can maybe i want to try to keep it hidden as much as possible so if I go down here like this, yeah, 
Yeah, we do it just like that. That'll keep it nicely hidden. What we're going to try to do with this build is make it so that we see as few wires as possible. Another reason why I wanted to go with the NVMe drive, we won't have any SATA cables sticking out of the side of the board, less wiring. Most of it, most everything will be contained within, within the board. In fact, we'll only have, we should only have inside the case, two cables. No, actually a little bit more than that. We'll only have cables going to the outside ring. We'll have, we'll have a cable going for the CPU power. Uh, you can't see that. Uh, going to this spot right here. We'll have our 24 pin main power going in here. We'll have a uh, USB 3.0 going into the side right here. Hey there, sexy. What and can I get we'll for you? We'll have uh, a couple cables for the front panel connector, connector down here. I think we're just going to have hard drive, LED, and power switch. I think are the only ones that this case comes with. So, and then we'll all oh, we'll have an audio cable too. It'll be an odd front panel audio cable. It'll connect down here. So all in all, we're going to have and then a couple fan headers. No big deal. But we we're trying to minimize the. Whoa. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> I have my bot going on my PC over there. But it doesn't actually play on stream. Who did Mez? <laughs> And solar lit just followed the channel. How come I didn't get a message on that? Oh, I know why. I should have heard this. I should have heard the follow. Give me a second here. I'm going to fix this. Okay, I should get follow alerts and stuff now. But the bot sounds you guys won't hear. Because that's actually come from my desktop PC. All right, where was I? So yeah, we're gonna have one, let's see, we're gonna have three, four fans. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cables, all going into this PC from the outside ring. And with the way that the case is, those cables will be nice and hidden, except for the point where they actually make contact with the PC. Okay. This little laptop over there I'm looking at right here, this is where the chat is. In fact, what I should do is I just do a chat pop out. And I can make the chat really big. And we'll just shrink that. Try to make this chat really big so I can see it better because right now I'm having a hard time seeing it. Change the text size on it. Font size. We're going to go 25. There we go. Yeah, I should be able to see that a little bit better now. Okay, so let's get this stuff. Oh, the CPUs always come with a case badge. In this case, we've got the Ryzen 5 case badge. It'll be up to, it'll be up to my buddy whether or not he actually wants to use that or not. I'm not gonna put it on his case. And with any PC build, always save the extra parts. So we're gonna save up, I'm gonna save up all these screws that are specific to this build. Um, and what I, and when I, when I hand him the PC, when he, when he comes to pick it up today, uh, he's going to get a box with all of the extra cables, uh, screws, all that stuff. So if, if he wants to ever, ever wants to make any changes to it in the future, he'll have everything he needs. All right. Going back to the Ram. I did open up all of these parts, inspected them, looked at them. With main board, with main boards, you always want to look at how they're suggesting that you put the RAM in because the different manufacturers do different things. This is dual. This is a dual channel board for RAM. If you want to 
actually use dual channels, they want you to put the RAM, especially if you're only using two sticks of RAM, they want you to put it into specific slots first and then populate the, the later ones after that. So I read in the directions that they want me to use slots two and four. Hey there, four. sexy. What can I get for you? Who was that? White Savage 300. Thanks for the follow. Welcome to the stream. All right, so we're going to use slots two and four. And I think about installing RAM, DDR4, DDR3, DDR2, even DDR, if you still actually have a system that old, there's a notch. There's a notch in it. Let me see if you can see that better. Yeah, there's a notch right there. And if you look on your RAM slot, there's actually a notch in the middle of the RAM slot. And I can show that to you guys as well. Installing RAM is one of the easiest things expensive thing but it's one of the easiest things that you can do to a pc to help increase its performance i'm not sure if you can see that can you see those notches right there those actually notches in the slot right there you just want to make sure the notch matches up and then of course one side of the ram stick is actually longer than the other so hey, you just want to get that match what up. can i get for you and who was that one I can't see that one from here oh twin holic Thanks for the follow. Welcome to the stream. So we're just gonna put hey there, slide sexy. this right in. What can in. I get for you? Another one. Who was that? Wild hype. Just follow the channel. Thanks for the follow, Wild hype. And basically, we just slide it into the into the grooves. Make sure the notch matches up. If you try to put your RAM in and you notice you're kind of getting a seesaw effect as you go to push it down, it means that. You don't have it lined up right. You got once you got the wrong. You have to flip it around. So if I was getting a seesaw effect, is that if I, or if I was getting a seesaw effect as I was trying to push it down, I'd have to just turn it around basically and do it that way. So I'm just going to slide it into these little grooves here and push down on one side. You can hear that click, and the RAM is in place. Do the same thing with the other one and slap four. All right, RAM is in place. And again, if you guys have any questions for me, tag me in the question in Twitch chat, type out, type out at RJBase3, so I can actually see the question. I'll see the red text as it goes by, and I'll be sure to try to answer your question to the best of my ability. Keeping in mind that I woke up at 4.30 this morning and I have not had nearly enough sleep. All right, so we've got our CPU in place, we got the NVMe drive in place. CPU here, NVM, NVMe drive right here, RAM is in place. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to put on this board, and I don't believe there is. I think that we, I mean, we have to put the GPU on at some point. So from here, we're going to start prepping the case. We're gonna put, one of the main thing, of course, is to make sure we get our back plate into the case. So I'm going to clear my tools away. Actually, I might need a couple of those again here in a minute. So we're gonna save all the extra screws and parts. I'm gonna get a Ziploc bag for all of his screws. Yeah, that's a good idea. Give me one second, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a Ziploc bag. All right. All right, Ziploc bag. We're just gonna use this to save all of his extra screws and small parts. As I said, when I hand this PC off to him, I wanna make sure he gets everything back with it. So if he needs to make any changes to it in the future, he can. All right, we're gonna clear the main board off of here. I'm gonna put the case on the table. Take the main board, put it up here behind me. These fans. Move that. And let's get this case down here. Judas, are you being sarcastic? Is this really a high quality presentation? Because 
I've never done one of these before. I was all worried about it. Uh, have you guys read the reviews on the Wraith Spire coolers? The Wraith Spire coolers. If he's not going to do any overclocking, the Wraith Spire cooler is actually plenty good. AMD actually has stepped up their game a little bit with these new coolers. Not, now not the, the, they have a small one that's not very good, but the Wraith Spire and the Wraith Max. Actually, if, if, if you're not overclocking, are actually pretty good. And on the, on the big one that they have, you can actually do some light overclocking on it. Uh, I don't know if they're loud or not. This is my first AMD build. I've, he I've heard, you know, if, if you have good cooling in your PC, they, uh, they're not too terribly loud. All right, so let's get the case prepped. Uh, this case comes with dust filters. There's one, oh, I guess you can't see that. There's a, there's a dust filter in the back. This is the top of the case. So that's actually just, it's just magnetic. You can stick it anywhere on the case if you so choose. I can just take it and stick it right down there. I think we need to back that camera up a little bit, don't we? Not sure if we can though. I'm just too crunched for, for space here. I need a bigger apartment is what I need. All right, but this is a tempered glass case, like I was saying earlier. So we're basically, we're just gonna take this whole case apart so that we can start working with it properly. I'm gonna get, oh, I need something to put these screws in. I think, I get like a little, oh, I have an idea. Be right back. I'm just gonna get a, a separate bin for him put all of his screws in. Screws that we're definitely gonna be putting back. Oh, you can't hear me. I got my microphone on. I just got a little plastic bin that we're just gonna to use to put all of his screws in that I need to put back into the case. This, this thing right here, if you can see it, this is the protective coating over the tempered glass. I'm probably gonna leave this on for him because some people just really enjoy peeling that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this out of the way over here so it doesn't get messed up. Um, we're gonna pull the front panel off of it. The front panel, and this thing is actually very easy to take off. That's what I love about Fantex cases. Now the front panel offers air intake through these tops here in the bottom. And then inside, see it, there's there's these dust filters in here, which is going to help keep his case virtually dust free. There's another one on the bottom. You can actually see it right here. I can actually pull that dust filter out if I wanted. This one's a little bit more annoying, so I'm not going to do it right now. Um, I, I've seen pictures of his current PC. His current PC is a dust nightmare. The case is from like 2006. It's got a top mounted power supply, no behind the main board wiring, and it's a, there's just wires in it everywhere. When we get this when we get this build done, and he sees this for the first time, he's gonna flip out. He's gonna be so freaking happy. Because not only do I build PCs, not only do I try to make a PC that will do well within a certain budget, but I also try to make it visually appealing as well. And like I said, with the, with the RGB LEDs that we're going to put in, his kids are going to freak out about it. And next thing you know, he's going to get his kids in the gaming, etc. So let's see. You guys can see the back of the, the PC down here. So we're going to get our... What did I do with the back plate? Herp, derp, 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 derp. Here it is. Okay. I'm going to get our back plate. Now, I've, done, I've put these things in so many times, it's just kind of second nature to me. But when you see, uh, when you look at a back plate, here's the back plate here. This side with all the little holes, that's for the audio. So when you put that in, if you're actually facing, if you're facing the hole, we're looking at the inside, but if you're facing the hole that it goes into from, oops, be careful there. Facing the hole from the outside, those little circles go to the right. So 
I'm just going to grab my grab my back plate here. I'm going to work it inside behind the wire there. The Fantex put that wire there. It makes it nice and easy to get, in, get to. And I'm just going to snap into place. And that's it. Back plate is in. Now this case has, it looks like it has, from the, from looking at the inside, it looks like it has the, the post already in place. And it looks like they are set up for an ATX main board. So I should, let me double check. One, it's always hard to remember exactly where the holes are set on every case, but we got the standard three, standard three, standard three on the bottom. All right, so you have the poster are already in place. That was nice of Fantex. So in a lot of cases, a, a lot of better cases, if you can see it, I'll try to set up, but you can see these little black dots right here. These are the motherboard posts that the, that the motherboard sits on. Puts a little bit of separation between the main board and the bottom of the case. Allows, allows air to flow through there. Also helps ground the main board. So in case there is a static shock, or, piece, or a little bit of stack or whatever, it helps keep it grounded. Uh, and these these posts you can actually remove. And in my screw bin, I got a. This is another thing left over from my business, my old PC business. I have this bin. It's just full, full of screws. And in here I got a bunch of the old brass motherboard standoffs Let's see if you can see that there kind of see that i really need better cameras but i got fan screws in here that's the that's the thing if you ever build a pc find some bin that you can put all your old screws in and save them because these i've, I've actually my son likes to build pcs a little bit but he doesn't build them that often he called me up about two years ago when he was at school and said, I don't have enough screws. I don't have the right kind of screws for this. I'm like, well, you can go to the PC, you can go to the PC store, Best Buy or something somewhere and see if you can get screws or I can just send you a handful of screws. And that's exactly what I did. I just reached into one of my screw bins. I just grabbed a, I just grabbed a really big handful of screws. And I put them in an envelope and mailed them to him. And he got them two days later and had every screw he needed. So, but that those motherboard standoffs i got tons of them there's actually two different sizes on these things so that can be a real pain but there's a there's a motherboard standoff right there but a lot of good cases actually come with the motherboard standoffs already in place or on the motherboard tray like this one does you can because like i said you can see them there so basically all i have to do is to get the screws that the specific screws that go with them and then we will uh just basically put the motherboard right in place now in this case they put the hard drive bays in the front which is what will allow them to save space and as i discovered last night the accessories came in one of the hard drive bays so we're going to actually open up our accessories box right now Yeah, a lot of cases are built by the same, the frames are built by the same manufacturers. That's actually very, very common. It could be a hand model. Judas, you flatter me. All right, in our accessories box, Fantex was nice to include some zip ties and our bag of screws and what i'm going to do since i have the bin for all of his screws i'm going to take out the zip ties we'll just set those to the side and i'm just going to dump all of these in here so i don't lose any if i was building my own pc if this was my own personal pc the pcs would or i mean that the screws would be all over the table and half of them would be on the carpet but when i'm building somebody else's pc when they paid good money for it I try to keep everything nice and organized because I don't want to lose somebody else's stuff. Okay, put this off to the side. What am I stepping on there? I need to get some water. All this talking. My throat's getting dry. Oh. Oh. 
with a good screwdriver and a tough hand, threads don't matter. <laughs> all right, so I got all the screws that came with the build here, or with the, with the case, I'm gonna find. I can't eyeball screws post very well to tell which kind of screw that's included they will take. Some take the smaller screws that you use like on CD drives and such. I'm just gonna test these out in the post and see. Just try to do some hand tightening on them. This one doesn't look like it's gonna work. Is that the right one? Really? Actually, that one, don't even screw one in. That makes sense. I've actually seen that before. No, that doesn't feel like the right one. Should screw in. If it's the right screw for the right post, it should screw in nice and easy. Otherwise, if you go to take it, take the board out later on, the post will come with it. It can just be a real pain in the butt. Okay, yes, yeah, so we want these smaller screws. So it's a tiny screw. It's a screw similar to like what you would use to fasten down a DVD drive, optical drive. So we're gonna need nine of these. There's four. You guys can't even see, okay, yeah, you can. Five, six, seven, eight and nine okay so we got i'm gonna put those to the side there i'm gonna put the screw bin over here so i don't spill it let me see if i can see the best angle for you guys while i'm putting this in i think you guys can see quite a Let's see we want to go this way Put it, put it like that. Yeah, actually, you can see the you can see the back plate. And the back plate's facing away from you. All right, I'm trying to make this. And again, I apologize for my lack of good cameras here. If I had a cameraman here, this would make it a lot easier. All right, so here's our main board again with the CPU installed. 8 gigs of RAM, NVMe drive. And what we're gonna do here, we're gonna line it up. We're gonna line up the back panel, which is actually gonna go this way. Oh, my phone's making noise. Why is my phone making noise? Who's messaging me? Oh shit, it's the customer. He's already on his way over. Oh, but then I'll have a cameraman. Yay! We'll have a cameraman, guys. <laughs> yeah, he can watch. Oh, I got something he can watch, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just going to line this up inside the case. I want to make sure. Wow, Fantex made that a little bit harder with that cable there. I mean, if you just made it just a tad bit harder, it would have been perfect. Oh, wow. So they've got this fan pre-installed and they've made it very difficult to get around it. I'm gonna push all these cables back through and we'll just reroute those again later. Probably should have done that to start. But that's all right. It's not that big of a deal. All right. Now, again, this fan cable. Working in smaller cases is always a little bit more of a challenge. And this is supposed to be a mid tower, but it's got a little bit less space in it than normal. All right. So we got the uh, main board is in. It's aligned. So now we're just going to screw it down. One of the things I like about my electric screwdriver is it has a uh, magnetic tip for the screws.
Makes it really easy to get to some of those tight ones back in the corner, you know? So we got that corner. We're gonna go over here to this corner. And we'll go to, uh-oh, losing my screen here. Watching PC builds never bores you. For me to build a PC, she would have to be pretty hot with big hooters. That's what I'm talking about, Dave. Okay, so there's three screws in place. Just getting all the corners first. Once I get all the corners, I'll start hitting the middle screws. The one that's in the middle middle in this part of the main board doesn't actually get screwed in. Got a couple on the side over here that I got about. I watch a lot of the uh, I watch a lot of the uh, YouTube PC guys. Uh, Jay's Two Cents is one that I watch pretty regularly. I like that guy, but I noticed that they never use an electric screwdriver. I can never figure out why. I've been building PCs with them since 2004. I can't build a PC without one. It's just way too annoying. Does Steve have big hooters? <laughs> what is your deal with Steve? All right, guys, I'm going to take a restroom break real quick. I'll be right back. Drinking a lot of water today. I didn't even get drunk yesterday for the happy hour show, but I'll be right back, guys. Let me see if I set this up here so you guys can see it better. Like that. That's where we're at so far. So I will be right back. Okay. I'll wait. I'm, I'm so nervous about building this PC on camera that I almost forgot to wash my hands after I used the restroom. And that would have been nasty. So, double gulp. There's actually a 7 Eleven really close to me here. I don't know if you'd ever use an electric screwdriver on a PC build. I like the control a precision screwdriver gives you for torque control and being able to feel if the threads are aligned correctly. I, yeah, I can see that. Um, I think I've just been using an electric screwdriver for so, so long. I know 
I know how that feels too. Like like this particular model, I've had I've had this particular electric screwdriver for since 2004. And so I know the way things feel on it too. Uh, if, if I got a, th a screw threaded correctly, etc. I've got the I got this thing set. It's got an adjustable adjustable top on it, so I can set how how hardcore it's going to try to tighten, or if it's just going to get real loose in my hand after the screw is tightened all the way. So, uh, I mean, this this was a this was a pretty decent screwdriver back in the day. And I'm just so used to the way that it feels that it, I, I can tell all that stuff now. I don't even know if they still make that one anymore. I've had it for so long. I can, and the thing that's really surprised me is I can't believe the battery has lasted that long. However, if I don't, if I don't put it on the charger, it, uh, it gets pretty, the battery drains pretty fast. So it's definitely not as young as it used to be. All right, I'm trying to think what we need to do on this case next, and I think I need to get the fans installed. And hindsight, in 2020, I probably should have installed the top fan before putting the main board in. Um, at a minimum, now I think before I do anything else, I'm going to put the power supply in because uh, there's these in the in these mid towers there's usually not a lot of clearance on the top or uh not a lot of clearance to get your psu power to the main board when the fan is in place so i think i'll put the power supply in and then start and start run at least routing those cables to the general direction that they need to be and then working on the fans after that so let's set this to the side for right now and let's get out our power supply want it right here you can see that actually pretty well get water off of the table that would be bad and how did this one i opened this one up already it's just trying to remember oh yeah it goes like this this is the Corsair CX550 80 plus bronze power supply. It's going to provide more than enough power for what he needs, but not too much so that it brings down the efficiency. It's not a modular, but it was the perfect size. Oh, look at that. Corsair gives us even more zip ties. And we got the screws, the, spe the specific screws for it in here. We'll use that. And we'll set these zip ties. You know, I'm not sure, guys, if we have enough zip ties. If you guys can see that. These are the zip ties that came a little bit closer here. These are the zip ties that came with the case. These are the zip ties that came with the power supply. And I also brought my own zip ties. And I got a few more right here. I'm just not sure if we have quite enough zip ties. I think we might run out. So, anyways, we're going to set those over there. Put these back up here. This, C this Corsair CX550, it was uh, an Antec power supply best pick and the 500 to 600 watt range last year all right so the power we got to take off the side panel here so we can access the back of the case get that off all right and then here we can see the back we've got move the power supply again out of the way let's get this out of the way we don't need the power cable right now screws over there and here you can see that this is the cavity where the power supply will be so we're going to need to route all the cables this cable right here this cable confused me there's actually a fantex logo on that on the flip side on the glass side that's rgb it plugs in with this right here 
But the thing that annoys me, this, this really annoys me, that there's a common standard now when it comes to RGB lighting in PCs, but yet companies like Fantex still like to produce their own propri proprietary RGB lighting controller. So even though I could, I could plug in, it would be so simple if I could just plug in the RGB lighting, uh, plug this in the power and then plug the RGB lights that I got for them into the provided cables, but again, proprietary I'm going to do everything the hard way it's a fan text case this is the p300 and again if you guys have questions for me just tag me in the question type it at rj base 3 i'll see the red text go by i can answer your your questions easier this is the fan text p300 so what i'm going to do here I'll turn the case around this way. I'm going to grab my power supply. We're going to do this fan down. The power, this case also has a separate uh, dust filter just for the power supply, which is, which is handy. Most good cases come with that these days, especially if they have a bottom mounted power supply. And I'm wrapped up in my headphone cord here. That's great, RJ. I moved the headphone cable to the outside of my shirt because I was getting beer rub on it. Beard rub, not beer rub, beard. Okay, so we're just gonna put the cables in and through. And then we will. Oh, they're not gonna let me do it like that. I thought that panel could be taken off. All right, so I guess we have to go in this way. No big deal. We'll just go, let's get all the cables out of the way. We'll go in like this and scoot it up. And then we get our screws for it. Let's get my screwdriver. I'm going to have to. lined up correctly and what I like to do I don't screw them down tight all the way because depending on the case and the power supply manufacturer the holes could be a little bit off so if you don't screw it down tight all the way from the beginning it makes it a lot easier to finagle the screws into place in this case we're dealing with a good a reputable case manufacturer and a reputable power supply company, so there really wasn't any issue here today, but I've seen that problem before. So I had to, I had to leave the screws loose to be able to finagle them all in properly. All right, power supply is mounted. Oh yes, raised, I'm just gonna tell you that <laughs> I'm just gonna say that right there okay I got your text message here all right raise I sent you a message yeah Captain Judas I'll tell you the address Sure, get right on that, guys. <laughs> All right, so power supply is mounted. Now, I was, like I was saying, I was going to go to, I was going to start setting up. Oops. Knocking everything off the table here. I was going to start putting the fans in place, but I wanted to put the power supply in and route the PSU, I mean the uh, CPU power cable first because that can be a real pain to do after a fan has been mounted i think that is if there's our cpu it says it says it right there i don't know if you guys can see that it's kind of far away but it says cpu right on it it's an eight pin cpu power connector as most new cpus require and now i'm not sure i don't think it'll be long enough to go this way so we're going to have to make a new line on this comes up this way and in we should have plenty of cable though that's the other thing about getting a proper power supply everybody 
you want to make sure if you get a, a good EVGA or a good Corsair Seasonic, the cables will have enough length. See, I can't even fit it onto the camera because that, that, that cable is so long. Um, I think he's here. So, yeah, Raze is here. Be right back, everybody. in the ghetto no like when i was in the army oh yeah, That's what yeah. I did in the army okay all right so yeah we're working on the build right now i was just starting to route power cables this is the webcam guys i think raised since his build or yeah say which one where's here. camera a there you go that's raised that's who we're building the pc for so it's not a lot of cable here so bear with me guys it's just a webcam so uh, you're gonna want, you're gonna want, you're gonna have to view through that. <laughs> it's gonna be weird. You're right. This is weird. Yeah, you want me to just leave it mounted? Would that be better? I mean, six to one, half dozen to the other to me. But All right, I lost my I thing over here. Else, how they feel about it? Okay, so I was gonna get ready to move the put the CPU, the CPU power it's, or CPU yeah power from the power supply, and we're gonna mount it up into this we're gonna put it through this hole and then we'll worry about the actual cable routing in a little bit i just got to get it around this pesky fantex fan cable that's not annoying at all and then what i'm doing there if i flip it around <laughs> flip it around so i can see it here that just allowed me to get the cable inside because there's, there's going to be a fan mounted right here. And if you have the fan mounted in place, it can actually be really hard in the way that the... See, they can never mount... They can never put the CPU power on there an easy way. They make you have to flip the whole cable around. I don't know why they do that. All right. So we've got the CPU power in place. So now we're going to put that, we're gonna put that top fan on there. Fans. <laughs> this has got a little bit of dust on it because, like I said, it was used, but it's not bad. Uh, the, but the thing to know is the side that spins, that's the intake side, and then the spot that's solid, that's the out, that's the outtake side. So if we want this thing, no wait, it's intake. Well, I've confused myself. Yeah, no, the solid side is outtake, the the spinny side is intake, yeah. So the air is gonna go in through here and it's gonna go out here. And if there's ever any question, if you get confused like that, like I just confused myself, you can't see it on this fan. I don't think the camera will be able to see those those arrows right there. There's usually arrows printed on the side of the of the uh, case or on the side of the fan that tells you. This fan is actually gonna mount Right up in here, should be able to just barely squeeze it in. That CPU power is gonna be annoying. Oh, yeah, we should be able to get it. So now I wanna align it so that I have the most cable and we can send that through a hole. Just put the cable through the hole first. Maybe, hopefully. Okay, got the cable here. 
we're gonna put it in just like this. All right, now I just need to get some screws for it. That's why I have my screw bin. Oh, now you can show them a really good view of the screw bin. I was showing this on stream earlier. But it's hard, it's hard when I didn't, didn't have a camera guy because it was hard for them to see everything. I'm going to get four black fan screws. And with these, fan screws are usually, for whatever reason, a softer metal. So I'm actually going to hand torque these into place. Dark Knight is making fun of my stock cooler. Yeah, I know. But it's a it's a it's a Wraith Spire. I mean, unless you're going to do overclocking, the Wraith Spire is plenty good. These things are always. You know what? I need a bigger screwdriver. Those are always tough to put in place. I'll be right back. Let me get another screwdriver. that okay yeah I don't know what it is about fan screws they just tend to strip out way easier really annoying this one right here This one, see how that stripped right there? Yep. That's why I like to hand torque these because they strip out so easy. There's a joke in there about hand torquing and stripping and it's not gonna make it, I'm in that. A good joke too. <laughs> comes to jokes like that I like to put all the ingredients on the table and just let everybody else make their own joke. <laughs> yeah, that's a good joke. <laughs> you know I'm, I'm gonna pull this one out. I don't like the way it looks. You have this really nice case and you have this one screw that's all stripped out and nasty looking and it's just it's it's, it's tweaking me and I'm not even the one who's gonna own it. better fan screw. I know I've got one. There we go. How does this one look? It's not bad. Okay. I'm really big on the appearance as well. So just even just little things like that would just really bug me. That's why we're not building this into my old case because Right. I, I, you showed me that picture of your old case, and I was like, no. You've seen my old case. Yeah, I have, but you know, I only see, I've only seen it two, three it's, times. It's vintage 2005. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It was, <laughs> it's old. Oh, we've got beer. Do you, if you can get yourself a beer if you want. I got, some, good. I got some in the fridge that's already cold. Uh, the stuff I brought should still be pretty. Thanks. Like that? Smoke on. Uh, don't choke. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Let's do the other fans. Now that we got that in place, we're going to go to the front. And we're going to do the other fans. I'm going to do it like, you know, we can do it. Since you're here now, I can do it like this. Okay. That'll be easier for you to. And I had I brought out a. Uh, Little baggies with screws in them. These are brand new. These were. 
Now they're little baggies. Oh. Little baggies that with brand new fan screws. Not that. I don't think it's up here. Um, I did bring them out. Maybe I put them over here. Oh, wow. See, this is what happens when I don't get enough sleep. Under here. Nope. Not under there. I, that's where I was looking. Here's one here. Here's one here. There's two. There they are. I put them back. I put them back in the. These came with uh, some Corsair fans, but I didn't need them. So I'm actually gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna go over here to this side. Riveting. Yeah, it is. But some people really like this. so I'm not here to get on anyone else's jollies. I'm just here to shoot video. <laughs> and then claim your PC. Yes, well, that too. All right, so same principle. This one in. Here, we're going to want to set it up so that... That... Get a screw ready. That didn't work, isn't it? Brings me back to the good old days. But again, you're not being shot at. Then I'm not being shot. I was never really being shot at. It was being shot around that made it exciting. Live fire training exercises. Somewhere I have a videotape of uh, me shooting of all the footage I shot during this live fire exercise. And there's one great shot where a piece of brass from a M240 Bravo bounces right off the lens of my camera. When I got back, I'm like, we cannot let the technician see this shot because it will kill me. Hmm. Sergeant Schultz will murder me in my sleep if he sees this shot. Sergeant Schultz, if you're watching this stream by any chance, I apologize. And it wasn't me. Was Sergeant Schultz a gamer? Uh, no, not really. I consider it extraordinarily unlikely, but I also believe in covering my bases. Okay, that one. These being brand new Corsair screws, I probably could have used the electric on it, but this Corsair tends to use better quality metal. Keep doing that, it's already in there. Come here. Other fan. All right, and this is going to go. Did I do that? I should have done that another way. That's all right. Just going to put that through there. None of this is really going to be seen. All right. This one, we want this. That. Through there. That right there. Oh, wrong way. A bit of dirt. Oh, let's see what I'm like this. There we go. That will go there. Now I get the rest of the screw. Can't even see the chat right now. Yeah. So will it play MWO? <laughs> yes, this will play MWO just fine. Real question is, will I play MWO just fine? 
Did you see the latest patch notes? I have not yet. Oh god, I wanted to throw up when I saw those last night. What's going on? Another buff to Lerms. Oh, another buff to Lerms? Where it's like, uh, now Lerms will auto-target your head? <laughs> no, they, they don't generate as much heat now. Oh, well that's good. Yeah. yeah. I need to go refit all my mechs with Lerms again. Okay. Yeah, we probably could have wiped out the inside of these fans. And I actually still can. But the new this new case has dust filters on it. Ooh. Yeah, so keep it. Hot, nice. That's good for someone like me who is um, not always the most assiduous uh, duster. Of and you have kids too. Oh well, yes, and they are basically filter machines. Yeah, because now that I can see it in the sunlight, they don't look very good. I didn't use them that long, but it was just a case that I used these in originally. These were actually in my old case, which had no dust filters on it. And then when I switched my color theme, they got resigned to the bin. And they haven't been used, and probably they weren't even used for that long either. That's the scary part. My, my last PC case was such a dust magnet. It was circa 2010? No, 20, 2008. I had a bottom mounted power supply. No shroud. Had uh, didn't have didn't have behind the main board wiring. No USB 3.0 ports, but it was big, and it was mean looking. I was like, that's the case for me. And now I look at it, and I'm like, oh my god, what was I thinking? Okay. All right, so the fans are in place there. Fans are fan on top is in place. All of the all the fans are in place, so now it's a matter of routing wires. Fun part. And before we actually tie down the wires, we, we will do a test to see if everything works. Okay, so audio actually going to come right back this way. Can you can you see that? You have, enough, you have enough cable there? I'm just going to put the audio up through there because it's that's near where the audio is going to be. Uh, we're going to do the USB 3. That's going to go in this one. Probably look at the front of the case yeah. there. Uh, this is what? That's a fan. So where are the fan ports in the front? The fan ports are we have one that we're gonna put in here, another one here, one down here. So one's gonna go low, one's gonna go high. The one up high is right here. So put that there. Maybe. Put one low down here. All right, and then we have that stays in there. This is power switch that's going to go up right there. And we have hard drive LED that's also going to go through there. I got main power that's going to go. This one, we're we'll to come back to that fan. Um, what we got here? This is PCI Express time. PCI Express, that's gonna go. Do you want your PCI Express cable to come across onto the power supply, or do you want it to come up from the bottom? 
I will bow to your superior knowledge in all things computer. If there is a better way to do it, do that. Well, we can plug it in one way. Oh, that's we also need to put the GPU in here. I forgot about that. Derp, 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 derp. Time for the GPU. I feel like I will need one of those. Yes, you will need a GPU. So on this, we're just going to loosen these up. We can lift this up. I guess we have to take the screws off first, don't we? So we're going to take off. Let's go back to the electric. We're going to take off this one. We're going to take off this one. All right. Now we're going to secure this up. these out. Let's get your GPU out. EVGA GeForce GTX 1060 3 gigabyte. I should be in the prices, right? They were talking about they were saying I they, they were saying I should be a hand model earlier. Can you describe the airflow setup you have in this computer build? Sure. 240 millimeter fans in the front bringing air in. Uh, since it's a mid tower case, it will have really good airflow coverage across the entire main board, the RAM, the, the CPU cooler, etc. Then we have 120 millimeter top fan for exhaust, 120 millimeter uh, fan in the back for exhaust, and then the GPU, which also has a fan on it, will be expelling about 50% of the air it takes in out the back as well. So in total, we'll have, we should have pretty equalized airflow. However, this main board has a feature. What I'll do here, actually, after, after we get the, uh, after we get everything plugged in and going and we get the case all sealed up, I'll actually start vaping around the case and see if air is being sucked in or blown out through any of the cracks and crevices around the case. And so if I know if, if, uh, if if the vape is coming out through places that aren't where fans are then we have too much pressure going in if i'm blowing vape around it and air is being sucked in from places other than where the front fans are then i know we have too much pressure going out and so in the bios of the main board we can fine tune the fans to have equal pressure equal pressure in versus equal pressure out thus uh a much much less dust build up and grind build up inside the case and here's the ps here's the power supply uh, take off the cover over the end there and it's going to go down into this nice bright silver slot right here oh you know what you want to do the honors <laughs> plugging the thing in no no you can pull off your plastic pieces oh god yes some yes yeah, yeah i knew it i, I say <laughs> i saved the tempered glass for you oh you did yeah see it's right down there uh, I was like some people really like that oh you can you can do the other piece seems well, only fair well there's there's multiples i'm just trying to get it started some of these are really difficult i don't know if this one's going to want to come off I'm mm. trying to get it off i don't have the fingernails for it there's that one, and then um, there's one up there. Oh my goodness. I have to switch hands. I'm not left handed. Here. Nice <laughs> chat if you want me to do it slower. <laughs> yeah. So then this, P, this, this GPU just has a standard six pin, uh, six pin power. So we're just going to slide it in right down here make sure i got it lined up correctly wow they made that difficult the placement of the audio capacitors and the way that fantex has this designed Oops, sorry. sorry, this is very difficult, but, but we got it.
Easy peasy. Alright, now we're going to screw this back. We're going to put this back down. That, put this back in place. Um, isn't the rear fan set up as an intake fan? No, in, you know, you always, you always want the, uh, the rear, because that the rear one is closest to the, the CPU and some of the air that's being expelled by the GPU. You want that as exhaust. Hot air rises, and so you have your top exhaust. That's, if that's blowing air out, and then you have your rear fan bringing air in, what you're going to end up having here is a, is a loop. Since hot air rises when the case is sitting upright, these fans in the uh, these fans in the front are, should be bringing the air in this way, and then it should be it should flow up and out. So it should go out out here and up that way. If, if you guys can see that a little bit better there. So that's the way that's the way with the air. Fresh air, fresh cool air in, hot air out, and that way you create proper airflow in it. Once this once this built, I started vaping on. That's how you know it's an art. Damn right, Judas. <laughs> Damn right. Okay. Let's go back to this. Magnet's not strong enough to hold this one. I'm just fastening down the GPU. I'll make sure it doesn't. Slide around too much. All right, GPU is in place. So now we need to get the I'll stick to the front. I'm going to get the PCI Express power. That's going to go in right. I think here. Does that look right? If I go one up. Go in, go in like that, and we'll actually wrap the A-pin up onto the cable to help hide that better. But, yep, that's going to go like that. All right. Now, let's see, what other cables do we have to have? This is another PCI Express. We won't be needing that. We'll need one SATA plug. I'll use that one. Don't think we'll need any four pin Molex. That's good. All right, now we're gonna have plenty of room to keep everything nice and hidden in the back. So that's good. All right, so now we can just start plugging these in before I actually permanently fasten any of these into their cable route. We're gonna, we're gonna do a post test on it. Okay, that's going to go there. Uh, we need this one to come up here. Okay, this plug right here is for a water cooling pump. Don't have in this rig. That's going to go there. Plug in the main power. Right there. Back through. One of the things I really like about these Corsair power supplies is the cables are all black. It makes it a lot easier to hide them and uh, the case looking nice. This is the front USB 3.0. It's not acting like it wants to go in though. I 
maybe that's not USB 3.0. Or did it, is it a bent pin? Can't tell. Did I bend a pin? I really hope I didn't bend a pin. I equally hope that. Let's see if it goes in this one. It slides right into that one. That one seems bigger and thicker. I'll put that on there like that. I'd like for it to come out and try the other one again. Come on. Yeah, there it is. It's just a different style plug, so it doesn't want to go in all the way. It's going to be that little bit of that blue showing there. They didn't, they didn't make the well deep enough for it, or Fantex made their plug too long. One of the two. Somebody screwed up there. But it was not me. <laughs> a front panel. That's USB, that's USB. This is going to be the front panel down here. I just need to figure out hard drive. Yeah, this is where the manual comes into play. I have to open up the manual, double check to make sure I'm plugging the front panel connectors into the correct spots. If this was a Foxconn board, I'd be able to do it easily. But sometimes they change things and when they change the different motherboard manufacturers change the pin out there's typically there's a standard way to do it and these days most everybody is doing it the correct way but it's always best to double check so phone that's my phone okay so what we're going to do is we're just going to open up the manual here and we're going to look at the front panel um they don't just show the pin out okay hard drive led resets we only have two. We have the hard drive. See, they're showing it right here. We have the, we're gonna have the hard drive and the power. Are the only two that are gonna be on here. So let's see. Hard drive is gonna go to the one on the left. I'm gonna turn this like this. Actually, I'm going to put this through here. The hard drive LED light is not very big, very long. That's okay. That's going to go right there. And then power. Power is going to go... Right there. Is that right? No, it's not right. Didn't do that right. There we go. That's the way it should go. Just like that. Alright, and then audio. So we look back here. Just gotta find the empty hole, the empty empty hole there versus the empty hole there. And this will just go in. Like so. Okay. And I think that may be everything. 
Oh, wait, we got in the back, we've got one SATA cable that we need to plug in for the Fantech RGB logo. Very important. <laughs> Get all the hardware. If the lights don't work, what's the point? Right, the lights make it go faster. Unfortunately, I'm going to be making them red instead of blue, or blue instead of red, so they won't go to that step. Okay, let's see. This is odd. Uh, literally building an unraid box while watching someone build a gaming computer. <laughs> How many people are watching right now? Hundreds, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, because this is... I mean, the side view of my gut has got to be worth what, at least... What, what's it say on the, the oh. dashboard over there? I'm going to I'm gonna have to walk way over there to see that. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. 32. Seriously? What it says. Wow. I've forgotten how to read numbers. It is summer. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to clean up the table. You brought you brought your uh, monitor and all that, right? Uh, I brought my monitor, my mouse, my keyboard, and my uh, Wi-Fi adapter if needed. Okay, and what we're going to do? Wi-Fi adapter? No, no, we're going to. I know, I figured, but here, you know, switch sides case, with you here. Better be over prepared than under prepared. Let's see. Do this? No, we'll just do this. Okay. All right. I will be. Oh, your stuff. We put your stuff all right here, right? Yeah. Okay. So we need to get a. We need to get a power strip. I did not bring a power strip. Ah, uh, I've got one. I kind of figured you would have one or two, considering. Well, actually, I don't have any spares in my place right now. I've Please. used them all. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is just borrow one from another place where I currently have one. So let's plug this back here. What, did you bring the, you brought the monitor cable too, right? Oh yeah, I brought power and, uh... Did you bring an HDMI, HDMI cable? cable? Okay, good. Alright, yeah, the GPU supports DVI-D, DisplayPort, uh, HDMI, bless you, has three display ports, one DVI-D and one HDMI. Let's see the HDMI. Wow, that's a big HDMI cable. Oh, size is everything. Yes, it is. That's what she said, right? Okay, let's plug this into your Dell. Doing that right. Okay. What is the camera looking at? Camera is looking at the. I'm assuming the reflection. Oh yeah, it is. It's the reflection <laughs> of the outside. That's what I, was I was like. Saying. I didn't understand. Like, the camera's looking at me, but it's like, showing the outside. I'm like, did you turn? The, do I have a webcam on my monitor that you turned on? How did you do that? It's not even plugged in. All right, we'll put this back here. Oh yeah, we need the power for the monitor, don't we? I mean. I guess we well, don't have to. Work it. That would be cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> Shut up! Where's the plug-in on this? Um, here. All right. I think the laptop has enough power for now that we can just plug everything in right here. Need your keyboard and mouse. Oh. Keyboard and mouse. Keyboard and mouse. Yeah. And we'll see if we can get this. Yeah, I'll switch the screen. That's a better idea. Whoever said that. Yeah, we'll go to that. Keyboard. This again, this is just a post test. There's still a lot more to do after the post test. Mouse? Mouse. What are, you, what are you doing? I'm watching your stream. Oh. Trying to get your numbers up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you connected to my Wi-Fi, though? 
No. Oh. Are you the one that played scene? No, that wasn't me. Okay. I was over here handing you things. That was Daishi Legacy. Was Daishi? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to need a power cable for the PC. Oh, that was me. That was you? <laughs> see, but see, they can't hear it on stream, though. I know, but I can hear it. <laughs> Now, keep your fingers crossed. This is the moment of truth. How sturdy is this couch? Huh? How sturdy is the couch? How sturdy is the couch? Yeah. RJ, you asshole, switch the fucking screen! I haven't even done anything. Oh, you did that, didn't you? No, that was not, I'm over here hiding. Okay. I haven't even tried to turn it on yet. You don't take cover after the explosion. Oh, there's not going to be an explosion. Oh, okay. He said, right before the explosion. All right, let's see if I plug the power thing incorrectly. This is MWO come pre installed. That's good. Fans are turning. I just didn't, I didn't plug in one fan, I didn't plug in two fans. So we're missing two fans. Waiting to see if we see anything on the screen. Oh, screen just went green. Metaphorically. F1. Okay, good. Let's take a look at. Let's take a look at the. Okay, cameraman. Oh, cameraman, cameraman. Yeah. Yeah. You want to look at this. We're just going to take a look at the BIOS to make sure you want to, you're going to, you want to show the screen. You stay here, just, oh. just step back here okay. so you can show the screen. Gotcha. Okay, so we want to make sure 3.5 gigahertz CPU record. We need to see the RAM. Where's the RAM? Stored memory. 2133, 8 gigs. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're everything is up and up in the the M.2 drive is showing, so yeah, posted first try. You just gotta get those other fans plugged in, route some cables, then we'll we will update your BIOS, uh, get everything put together, and start installing your operating system. Oh, but Sweet. look at this! I didn't screw in one of the fan screws. Okay. Yeah, come on. Right. What am I not paying you for? And it looked like the light over here was a little off because the logo, it isn't see-through logo, it's just a red light over there. Interesting. On the older version of this case, this fan text lit up in, lit up in, in whatever color you assigned it to, but now it does not see through, it's just a red light up there. Interesting. Oh. Okay, so we're going to clear away, we're going to clear away the monitor, keyboard, and mouse. I'm going to switch the scene. Unplug yeah, plug, unplug everything from the PC. We're going to figure out where those other fan wires are going to go. Power to? Yep. Yep. Unplug it all. And then get rid of this. So aside from the two fans missing, we're looking good. Move this down here. Okay, now we need the cameraman again. Cameraman. And then if you uh, if you switch the scene, you look on OBS. There's the box on the left where the mouse is. If you go to Logitech webcam, click on Logitech webcam. Okay, yeah. So that makes that the primary one. All right. So here's one fan right here. So we have to figure out where we're gonna plug this in, and we'll probably put it. Really should go right here. So this fan we will move down and we'll plug this one in. Where will we plug this one in? Are we actually running out of fan ports? 
Ain't good. I have one back here, but that's really annoying. So we might have to use the pump port. That's his pump or fan. So yeah, we can do that. So there's that one. And this one, we should have one more. What other one wasn't working? The one in the back, right? Yeah, it was the rear and top one. Both the front were working. Okay. All right, so we have one spot available down here, right? Um, sort of. That would mean that this cable will come back here and come up here. Yep. And Sane says 240 millimeter fans. You can drive a hearse through that case. Lots of air. That's the that's that's what we're hoping for because everybody doesn't seem to like the Wraith Spire cooler default cooler we have on here. So we want to keep much airflow. I don't have a spare thousand dollars lying around. I'll let you build some Bizarro World liquid cooler. No, no, I don't do that. There's people out there. That's their whole game is overclocking with liquid nitrogen. Oh, it's, yeah. it's pretty cool to watch. It's just uh pun intended. No, no pun intended there. I had to actually think about that one <laughs> for a second. <laughs> so I should I sent my wife a picture. She says, Oh wow, it's a pretty box with fans and dots. <laughs> that sounds yeah. Alright. I'm gonna quickly turn it on again just to see if there's no power. Yeah, there's no power. We're going to fix that. Just to see if all the fans light up. I think I got them all this time. Yep, all fans are lit up. Well, were those fans white? Tell me again. Yeah, didn't you? No, oh, they're blue. They're blue. Yep, one of those fans is kind of noisy, so we are going to have to fine-tune those fans. All right, so that's that. So now we have to make everything back Ooh. here look proper. What's the CPU 27,000X? It, it's an AMD Ryzen. Actually, you already helpfully solved this issue, didn't you? What? You put in a bot command. You have the 1500X in yours. I don't know. Libra Universe is saying, what's the CPU? I thought you had a bot command to post the specs. I'd... There it is. Yeah. CPU is a Ryzen 15, 1500X. But yeah, it's exclamation point build. Okay, so we're not going to use any of this. We're going to run all of this. I should have ran this differently, but that's all right. We're going to fasten all of this down in here. Gonna get rid of this. We're going to hide. A lot of this is just going to be hidden because it's never going to be seen. It's all going to be hidden down in the shroud down here. It's not going to impede airflow. It's not going to ever be seen. And if we get all that out of the way, that's the stuff that we don't have to deal with. And then we're going to take this and put it down there like that. And then we're going to take this put that down there like that and then let's see here we're gonna zip tie all of that together I go like this how are we gonna do this I want to make this 
could just go straight down here. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's a good idea. And we're gonna go over like that. And this is where the zip ties come in. What do we do with all the zip ties? And we're sitting right here. Then things started getting moved around. Yeah, that always happens. <laughs> that's all right. I've got plenty of zip ties. I'm not worried about it. We'll start with these. I can't see my chat anymore. Specs on the case say 120 millimeter. Yes, the case came with 120 millimeter fan and mounted in the rear. The top exhaust can do either 120 or 140 and the fronts can do either 120 or 140. Yeah, I donated the 120 millimeter on the top and I donated the 140 millimeters on the in the front. That come here. Come here. That's a hard one to get to. Alright, zip tie this down. When tying wires, never forget your trusty wire snips. <laughs> these zip tie tails annoy the shit out of me. But I'm kind of anal like that. So. Right there. This is the most exciting part of the build right here. <laughs> See, with you, I can't tell if you're being sarcastic or not. This is my least favorite part. <laughs> no, actually it's not. Installing the software is my least favorite part. We're gonna take this. It's gonna be hidden, but we're gonna take this and we're gonna put this with this. And we're just gonna tuck it under there. Like that number there. Okay. I'm going to zip tie those to that. Zip tie up here. Zip tie right here. You know what this is for? Um, nope. SSD. Ah. So if at some point in the future your 512 gig NVMe drive is not enough, you can add another standard SSD to it and it would just mount right back here. Okay. And there's actually room for two of these, but they only give you one tray. Go figure. All right. So like I said, the rest of that won't be seen. I think that was actually one of the easier wiring jobs I've ever had to do. Oh, you know what we're missing? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Famous last words. Like, oh, the upside down RGB color LED. Yeah. Fortunately, these are the magnetic kind. Oh, that is fortunate. Yes. And we won't need any of this. Look, look what we got. Hey, zip ties. More zip ties. Okay, do that that okay so we need to bring both of these into see, these are supposed to plug into these rgb strips are supposed to plug into something like this which then has uh 
can take can take two of them right but we don't want to use this big thing we don't want this in the case the main board comes with an rgb header on it so what we're going to do we're going to take both of these we're going to figure out the best spot to put these so that we can bring these two pieces together and then we're going to have another solution over here that should yes this is something i picked up off of amazon this is a four-way rgb splitter so i can take both of these rgb lights plug them into the one splitter and then feed the one the one splitter into the rgb header on the main board so we'll turn this like this and then the rgb header is actually located i think that yeah this is it right here next to the audio port so what we would actually do here is we'll take this one we're going to feed this up and through here we're going to have to cut some zip ties and reapply them i hate i hate it when that happens we're going to plug this in i can't see it i'm going to turn it It's supposed to go. It doesn't act like that's what it wants to do. Oh, there it goes. Okay. All right. That now we have to figure out. We have to figure out in the case where you want. think do one oh yeah there we go because we could do one along the side you tell me but i think i think having put one along the side right here plastic isn't it oh, that's magnetic so we put one along the side right here and then we just feed this wire out i think it's plastic no, it's not magnetic, is it? Is that sticky? Does it have sticky as well? It's got 3M. Yeah, it's got sticky on it. If the case this material, that's not plastic. Or, that's plastic, isn't it? No, that's... Oh, no, I think it's... That's plastic. It yeah, it's plastic. So the magnetic won't work there. It should work on the top, though. Yeah, see that? You see how, you see how it sticks, though? Yeah. So we'll have to do one with the sticky... And but we'll do it right here. Sure. Okay. We'll stick one right here. And then we'll feed this through here. And then hopefully we have I have an extension cable too if it's not long enough. I think. Yeah, it's not gonna be long enough. I have one extension cable. Let's see if we do the other one up here. Well, I've got to use the sticky anyways. Those magnets are not very good. And then this one will feed through here. Now, stream. I hope you're paying attention because this is a this is a vitally important <laughs> part of the build process. Without the RGBs, this computer won't be nearly as fast. <laughs> uh, computers and magnets. Bria, you didn't use computers and magnets years ago when you had these, these early model hard disk drives. Uh, because disk drives, if you're not aware, use magnetics to write and read all the zeros and ones. And if you'd gotten magnets close to 
close to the, the disk, you could actually erase data on the disk, but that's no longer the case. Even, even modern hard drives, you can, use you can use light magnets around because they have enough shielding in, in them that it won't matter. I have Vipes' undivided attention. <laughs> All right, so if both of those are coming out here, it's not going to be long enough. So maybe if we ran it Yeah, okay, so if I flip if I flip one of them around, where's the other one at? Oh, okay. If I flip this one around, right, and I run this through here, like so, stick it up like this, I think what we need is another USB, that not, not quite, oh, I know what to do. Oh, this is this will work. I know exactly what to do. See, I'm too smart for my own good. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Paul said about you. Yes, that's what everybody says about RJ. He's just too smart for his own good. Okay, we have the extension cable, mm -hmm. and it's positive on both ends. Damn it. Seriously, why you do this? Can it, will it come out? Sometimes they come out. Uh, I need to get a pair of pliers. I shall be right back. For those that don't know, oh, I gotta have the microphone on. For those that don't know, I'm trying to route the RGB cables so that we can utilize the, the RGB header inside the PC. That way we won't have to. Really? <laughs> Are you freaking serious? <laughs> this week on RJ Breaks Things. No, it's not broken. They just put a spacer on there. That's all they did. It's just a stupid spacer. Spacer. So, am I, am I being too smart for my own good? Uh, we've already we've already turned it on, Dark Dark Knight. It works. the The trick now is attempting to utilize this with the RGB header on the case. So we have to reroute. How would we do this? We can definitely get the one up top. We can maybe because that is not going to reach. We might have to do a weird sticky thing. In order to make this work, or see, I just don't think that this would look very good because you're going to be able to see everything in here. Yeah. The other option would be to just put it down on the bottom like this and then do the other one down the bottom. But I don't think that would look very good. Call me crazy. I don't know. What's the chat say? Is, it, is the chat all seeing this? I think they're, I mean, I'm showing it, so if they're watching, they're seeing it. Vipes is seeing it. He's paying rapt attention. Yeah, Daesh says, oh, come on, <laughs> RJ, to be smarter than the light strip. So does anybody have any ideas? Here's the problem. Down here is the is the rgb header i put i put on this splitter so that i could in theory create uh more length and be able to plug in both rgb strips to the one splitter however if i have a if when when i have a strip up top the cable is only coming out about that much and then this doesn't reach Likewise, I can, I can get an extension 
and I could plug an extension into it. So here's the other header right here. If, if I plug in an extension here, I can get down to that there, but it's still a matter of making this long enough. That might be the way to do it. I'd have to curve it. I'll have to do a weird curve. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a, a funky curve on it. So I'm going to turn this down like this. Turn down for what? Okay, so that way what we're going to do here is we're going to run this through here. And we're going to give it all the length. And then we're going to have to kind of do a curve. We'll have to kind of stick it on there and then kind of curve and stick maybe if possible somebody made a bendable rgb strip that would be freaking brilliant yeah everything's bendable if you try hard enough yeah and breakable too well you know how much do we actually need that gives us that so we need a connector i have connectors those my connectors? No. Here are my RGB connectors. Can I even get into this thing? You know, I'm spending more time working with the RGB than I actually spend building the damn thing. <laughs> Things we do for modern PCs. Okay, and this would plug into this like so yeah. okay so and that all done. yeah they, they don't stay together very well they never have what we should do if I zip tie this do this that'll be good and then even if it does fall apart we want to give this thing as much black as possible. So I'm going to zip tie this to the other cable there. Oh. Okay. And that. All right, snip that off. All right, now the other one, we'll be able to get to that easy. So what I want now, and that leaves only a little bit up there. So I'm gonna pull off the tape. Oh, you know what? If I could take it back here, something like that. Yeah, it's be a little bit on the back side. That's all right. A little bit of a curve is natural. And then we'll pull the tape off of this one. And this is going to be a trickier one just for the placement. We have to get around all the little things. I go like that. Vibes saying it's crooked. No shit, Vibes. <laughs> He's an observant one, isn't he? Probably why he always dies first in comp matches. He's so observant. Well, he's observing. <laughs> bullets flying towards him. Hmm. Making sure they're flying straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
shot fired. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a bike. <laughs> No Okay, it's got some humps in it. As long as we make it stick where it needs to stick. Oh, you need to stick right there. Let me see. I think that'll work. I think it will. Do you have a hot glue gun at home? Uh, yeah. Good, because I, I I reuse my LED strips when I when I move them around. Yeah. I just use hot, little hot glue to put them on because it comes off so easy. It's not. It doesn't get hot enough inside the case to melt the hot glue, which is always a good thing. That's why. Oh, kind of like... you asshole, switch the fucking screen. Why? Who did that? Why? Is this a critique on my camera work? Is, this, is there a soundtrack playing? Oh, that's funny. Is there a soundtrack playing? Right Wolf says, yeah, listen in the background. And then he played the scene. Th God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now... <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can find my electrical tape. I want to tape. I'm going to get. Let me see if I can find my electrical tape. I'm going to tape those two together so that they don't. Right back. Uh, oh, just sorry, vibes. It's just black electrical tape. I have white electrical tape. You know, I don't care. You're the esthetician here, not me. I'm just thinking white electrical tape in the middle of two black uh, connectors there. All I'm doing is putting this on here to keep them from disconnecting because it is a little tight. As they can see because they keep falling apart. I have a little piece to do the initial hold. Here we go. Now, I'm gonna wrap this cable down. Oh, we're gonna do the same thing on this one. It seems like they could come up with another, I think that's why Fantex makes their own proprietary RGB light connectors because the generic standard just comes apart too easy. That wrap this down with the other cables. Okay, and then we need that to be tied into that. So we're actually just gonna snip that one off. Grab another one.
run it through like this. Put this in here. Oh, we know what we need. More electric tape. Yep. One of, the, one of the main reasons why I also want to use the RGB header on this is because if you don't use the RGB header and you want to control the RGB light strips, you have to use this remote. How old are your boys? Three. How old your girl? Seven. Seven. So he's got two, he's got twins, three-year-old three year boys mm -hmm. and a seven-year-old girl. This has got bright, shiny colors on it. So with the bright, shiny colors next to daddy's PC, how long do you think it would take for this to disappear? minutes minutes yeah so if we use the rgb header on the main board he can just he can control the rgb with software and we don't have to install all the these extra thingies and this and use the remote and because we have enough stuff in here crammed in here as it is why make it worse oh yeah we have uh roku on on both of our tvs and we have managed to lose both roku remotes we have no idea where they are. They're not just lost. They're like thoroughly lost. And, then, and they're not just like in a couch. Nope. We've looked through the couches. We've lifted up the couches. We've lifted up the chairs. We've looked under every piece of furniture. I, we have no idea. They might have been eaten at this point. That right there. All right. So... How's the wiring look to everybody? Probably not the best job I've ever done, but I don't think it looks terrible. <laughs> Knowing kids, the Roku remotes are probably in the toilet. You, they usually can't get into the bathroom. Usually. The bathroom door usually stays shut for that very reason. I, especially one of my boys is, um, he has a scientific mind and likes to see how things work that's a good thing you should promote that i am going to promote that but right now it means what happens when i put this in the toilet oh, what happens when i stick this in the socket yeah. <laughs> i wonder how this comes apart oh yes someday he's going to be very successful at something but for that's only if he lives that yeah long. he's got to make it to that to that someday right uh, all right so the PC is built, the RGB is in place. We should try it. We should turn it back on and test it to see if the RGB even lights up without the software. It does. Look at that. Ooh. Ooh. Uh. Ah. Not bad. What is that red light? That's the power light. Where are you supposed to be able to see? Oh, is it? The... Right there. Right, okay. This, this, this light used to light up the Fantech logo, but for some reason they, they, they stopped making that see-through and they just put the red light. They, see, how they, see how they cut out the top right here? See how it's solid oh, right I here? And they, yeah. Yeah, that's, but, that, okay. but this light is also supposed to be RGB controllable. Oh, yeah, look at that. So, oh, you, can, you, so you can press this button here make it the same color as your RGB strips or your fans, whichever yes. whichever you prefer. The blue meanie will ride again. You know what? I'm going to zip tie the strip down right here. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe I am. Yeah. I'm going to get a bigger zip tie. Size matters. Size always matters. This out. Put that through there. I'm going to bring it back around. I'm going to put it. Is this because of the bumps and where we had to route that RGB strip to? Mm -hmm. I think it's going to eventually loosen up if it's not tied into place. And since this will never be seen underneath the front panel, 
just do that number there. All right, now let's do that. Ooh, I'm, I'm going to give you a big honor here in a second. <laughs> you're going to you're going to you're going to orgasm. You're going to love this so much. <laughs> you know me so well. And the back panel back on. All right, let's put the front panel back on. And we're going to put, before we do that, now, another product placement. No, I'm not sponsored by these guys, but these things are available on Amazon. It's like $15 for this huge bin of these glass wipes. These things are perfect for PCs. There's some other stuff out there that's like the sticky putty stuff that's also really good but it's a lot more expensive than this. And if you have a tempered glass or plexiglass side panel, and you're afraid about, if you're, for, if you're afraid of spraying the stuff around your case, you can just get, the, you can get these wipes and wipe down the sides and you never have to worry about spraying any liquids inside your case. And they're also good for cleaning off fans and dust out of the inside of a PC. Uh, this has been one of the best $15 I've ever spent on Amazon. I use it to clean my keyboards and mouse. Who cleans keyboard? I do. <laughs> All right, can you pen? Oh, I got it. Move this back over here because we're going to need the screws. Set that there, that there. I'm not going to deprive you of the. I was watching that. <laughs> I'm just pulling it away so I can get to the corners. I was talking about it on stream earlier before you got here. I'm like, I'm going to save that. I thought about it. I was going to. I wanted to pull it off so bad, I was going to do it even before the PC was built. But that's like the last thing you do. Can you see the chat? Last thing I load up your online back to your All right. Yeah, you're gonna have to do this nice and slow. Let me, let me grab the camera here. Okay. Nice and slow, guys. Waiting for someone to hit the. Hurry up. <laughs> ah, was that not satisfying? Oh, that is so satisfying. You know what I don't like? A tempered glass, please handle with care sticker. I don't like that GPU cable. There's a couple of things I forgot to do. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't like the G the GPU cable. That just there's, there's multiple things wrong with it. And I don't like the tempered glass sticker either. Back over here. Okay, this is just it's too much cable sticking out. And I don't like I don't like this just free floating out there. So we're gonna Ooh. 
just realized there's LEDs on the main board too. Did you see that along the left? Oh edge? wow, I do. Yeah, that's pretty cool. They probably only do that one color. That's that's fine. Blue and white. All right, I'm gonna do that there. I'm gonna take the back panel back off again. We were so close. It's just little things, you know, after I get it all buttoned up, I look at it and then I find the things that are irritating to me. And we want... Death Riddle says, uh-oh, I see a problem. Not enough RGB. Needs more RGB. Oh, uh, so saying I went too fast. <laughs> Oh, it's an AMD, AMD PCs burn down. Now. No, the, the the modern Intels do. They get so freaking hot. You have to delit them just to and reapply thermal thermal glue, just just to keep them from doing that. It's annoying. I don't know. What do you guys think? How how does it look to you? Oh, I need some more wipes here. We got some. I got some stuff on the inside here. That's that's not. That's not acceptable. Yeah. I don't know, viewers. What do you guys think? We still got some, some more tuning to do. We got to up, upgrade the BIOS, install the operating system. But I don't know. What do you guys think? That cable. Yeah, the wet on the inside will show all the dust. That's which is why. Raze is going to invest in <laughs> dirt ease for all your cleaning PC needs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, you are going to have to. Well, it also has dust filters on it, so it's not going to be, the dust is not going to be as bad as, as you think. It, it, uh, the dust filters will keep a lot of the dust off. I, I pointed those out earlier on in the build. Uh, there was, there's a dust filter underneath the power supply. There's actually one. It goes right, right up here. Oh, there's my vitamins. Yeah, so we got this one up here. It's re this one's really not as necessary. Because this, since this is uh, an, an exhaust fan. But we do have a couple dust filters. If you look on the front of the case up here. There's a dust filter right underneath here. And likewise, there's another one down at the bottom underneath here with in the, the front panel simply pulls off. You can pull the dust filters out, run them under the sink, dry them out, stick them back on. So dust is not going to be a huge problem, but it will eventually build up over time. First layer of dust settle on there. So then it'll just be gray. There you go. About it. Yeah. All right, so let's button it back up one more time. Ah, there goes my microphone. I stepped on the cord. Yeah. I'm still stepping on the cord. Uh-oh. Time for lunch. Mm. The alarm snoozed. Dismiss. It's time for lunch, kids. Let's make sure we have all that in there. Posted first try. Uh, what do you looking at your PC, knowing what you have in it? What do you think your first upgrade will be? Um, probably RAM. Yeah, definitely. Definitely the RAM. I think... How many gigs do you have in your current PC? 16. 16? Yeah. Yeah, so you're going to notice the 6. I mean the 8. The 8 gigs. So RAM would definitely be a good choice. And the RAM that I put in here, you can get an 8 gig kit for like 80 bucks. 
matching speeds there. I can even give you a link to it on Newegg so that you can... Uh, uh oh, we lost a grommet, didn't we? Did we? No. No, we didn't. Okay. You want to pull off the tempered glass sticker? Sure, I'll pull off the tempered glass sticker. Right. Talk a lot. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Ah. <laughs> That's about how long it lasts in real life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <And> model RJ. <laughs> okay, we're going to clean off the side. There's a little bit of dust on the inside. All right. There it is, kids. Oh, let me grab my phone again. I wish I could have gotten color matching RAM, but I was trying to keep everything under the oh, $1,000 okay. price point. Trust me, the budget is much more important than the aesthetics. But the aesthetics don't stuck. I mean, this, this PC does not look half bad, in my opinion. Oh, I think it looks great. I think your kids are going to love it. I think, they I, think I, I, I give that thing 10 minutes and there's going to be fingerprints all over it. All right, guys. Uh, I think we will end the stream here at Boots. I'm assuming you guys all know how to install an operating system and update a BIOS. It's all pretty simple stuff. Um, I am going to have to make the uh, Windows... Uh, boot drive for I might have one already I just have to dig through my flash drives and find them because I have a bunch of flash drives were lying around here but uh updating the BIOS usually only takes about 30 seconds or so especially in these new ones so I think I think we can end it here and and uh call it a day sure, sounds good to me. what's a BIOS BIOS <laughs> is the software oh here's some, here's an interesting fact and just to answer that's Riddle's <laughs> question there. The BIOS is the software in the main board. It's installed on the main board when you buy it. And it's usually just a very small, small app. And that app basically allows the communication between all the different devices to work on the board. And it also tells the board what to look at to load the first device. Oh, lo, 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 lo. Yes, very <laughs> much trolling. But just in case there's somebody who didn't know what the BIOS was. And the BIOS also determines what you can run on the PC as far as the CPU, RAM, all that stuff. We're going to update his BIOS so that in the future, if he wants to stick in a 2000 series Ryzen 7 or other CPU, he can just literally drop it right in and it'll work right out of the gate. I don't even have to plug it in or anything. I'll just drop it right in the top. Yep. Get some new thermal paste for your cooler, etc. All right, kids. So that's going to be it for us. Uh, here, let's, let me have that. Um, yeah, so. Everyone just wants to hang out. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> so there's the build. Oh, you know what we can do here? I know what to do. You see that uh, dial switch on the wall right yeah. there? Can you turn that light off? You can make it a little bit darker in here. And then I'm gonna close the blinds as well. Get freaky in here. Oh boy. Oh, they say wait, no vape test? Oh yeah, we'll we'll do that after we update the BIOS and get all the latest controls for the fans and everything. Okay, so let's see how it looks now. Still a bit of a glare. If we look at it with with this yeah so yeah yeah we're gonna we're gonna kill it now and then we will uh finish installing all of the updates and everything else so thanks for tuning in guys uh in the future 
I don't know how often I'll be doing this. I don't build PCs <laughs> nearly as much as I used to. What? The, the lack of a vape test is causing consternation. Yeah. <laughs> All right, vape it. Vape it. Okay, we'll vape it from the front. Fine. Oh, one. Yeah, I guess we'll, maybe pull the chair a little bit closer and then we just use that webcam. There we go. And then we're going to angle it down just a little bit. Okay, and then uh, in, the scene, in the scene, not the scene, sources, turn off the Logitech webcam. Click the eyeball next to the Logitech. Yep. Okay, good. Okay, vape test. Okay, let's just try blowing it in the front. How's it looking? Better. Is that just wash that's yeah. coming out? Okay. Yeah, Can you see it traveling through? I can see it coming through. By the time it gets out the uh, uh, sauce, it's kind of harder to see. Okay, let's do it. Let's do a big one into it. Oh. Do you see it coming out of any of the cracks or anything? Mm -mm. Looks like it's coming out the bottom. Well, no, wait, there's no fan down there, is it? There's a power supply down there. Okay. So, so the po the power supply is pulling in air from the bottom and spitting it out the back. So when I blow it down that's here, what it's doing. yeah, it's coming underneath and that's yeah. what happens. Okay. So you didn't see it coming out of any of the cracks or anything? I didn't. Okay. I'm sure that's real. <laughs> that's what you came here to see. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. That's it. Uh, we're gonna do the. We're gonna. I'm gonna have some lunch because I haven't eaten yet today. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, like I said, I don't do these that often. It's not often that I get to build cool PCs anymore. But if you would like me to build your PC and do it on stream, very easy to do. We'd have to record a verbal contract for both your protection and mine. And then once a transfer of money happens, I purchase. So how long did it? This was a week. Yeah, eight a week. days. Mm -hmm. Eight days. And it was. Well, it, I got paid on. Was it? Last Friday, no, the 6th, was that last Friday? Yeah, I okay. got paid on the 6th, gave him the money, I think that day, and computer eight days later, yep. Yeah. Now obviously if you're not local, we'd have to ship the PC to you, so that there would be a little bit of an extra cost in there with packing up the inside full of the expanding foam, make sure parts ship correctly and all that, and we'd, that would all have to be factored into the cost. I don't, I don't take any money from doing these. I didn't, I didn't get any money from Ray's. He brought me beer. That's brought it. Beer. He brought beer. So I just, it's just fun for me to do building gaming PCs and then being able to stream it now too. I, I just think that that's uh, a lot of fun. So if you would like to do that, just get a hold of me. Uh, we'll do a recorded verbal contract, video contract, so that uh, again, it protects you and me both. And that way, if I don't come through on my part or something gets screwed up, you got the you got the video contract to come back to me. You can sue my ass, that sort of thing. So, beer the build now. They want us to beer the build. <laughs> beer, beer the build. <laughs> Actually, right. yeah. Grab grab a couple. Grab, I'm, grab I want beer. I want to do an IPA. You want to do the the uh, one I just got from uh, the single Minnesota? Yeah. IPA? Yeah. And then. All right. And then in this cabinet right here. Up the top shelf, there's beer glasses. Okay. Oh, I can pour mine, it's all right. Well, this one wasn't attached to a six pack, uh, so it was rolling around a little bit. All right, let's see here. Here's my beer. This is the Fair State Co op IPA. Uh, I got it in 
actually got back the day before. Funny. Actually, a little left in that can there. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Can you see that? Cheers to your PC. Ah, mm. uh, beer. And that is a lunch beer right there. All right, now we pour it in the, the PC, right? Yeah, yeah, we got to pour it in the top, oh, see if the, the fan top. spits it out. <laughs> All right, kids. That's it. That's it. We're done. We vaped it. We bearded it. We RGB'd it. RGB-ed it? <laughs> sure. All right. Like I said, if you want me to build your PC, build your PC online, or on stream, just get a hold of me. We'll do a video contract and uh, get everything squared away. Otherwise, uh, my next stream will probably just be a gaming stream this evening or something. So you guys all have a great one. Have a good weekend.